All right, so I actually sort of feel like LLMs have completely ruined computer science degrees and I wanted to talk about it. I think that the most valuable thing that I learned in my computer science degree when I graduated in 2017, which wasn't that long ago, but still, I guess it is a minute ago, is just the fact that I knew how to critically think. And I think at the very beginning of my degree, I didn't really know how to approach problems. I didn't really know how to think that critically. If I got stuck on something, I was very akin and used to just giving up and not really caring about finding an answer. But doing my computer science degree, it really taught me how to sit down and think about hard problems and think about them for a long time, really chew on them. You know, I had nights, especially in college, where I went and slept in the library. And there was one time where I remember I actually slept in the library like two nights in a row. And the NYU library had this rule where at midnight, anybody above you know, any of the ground floors and above, you had to go to the lower levels, lower levels one and two, because those were the only two levels that were open past midnight. And those are 24 hours. And so there were two nights in a row where actually at midnight, the security guard came around and told me and everybody else who was there or unfortunate enough to be there, we had to go downstairs. And I'd go downstairs and I'd tr keep trying to do my data structures assignment or project. and I couldn't figure it out for the life of me, but I sat there trying to figure it out until seven in the morning. And then I came upstairs from the library, walked outside and, you know, saw random people going to 8 a.m. classes along with a bunch of other random people who live in New York City. And I was annoyed, you know, but that really taught me, I think, how to deal with hard problems. And I'm not saying that I did that efficiently, and I'm not saying that you have to sleep in the library to make a good attempt at a project set, but I do think that that taught me how to sit there and to try and to think differently and to think about 100 different ways for why something might be going wrong and really figure out how to debug things. You know, at that point, I probably wasn't very good at it because, again, I slept in the library for two nights in a row. But you get the point. I really wanted to become good at this thing. And I was willing to put in the time and to critically think about how to get good at that thing. Nowadays, it feels very different. You know, I'm not in college, but I don't really envy anybody who's doing a computer science degree today. And I think the reason for that is because it's very different. It feels to me like you always now have this thing that can just magically do the work for you. You know, when I was in the library and I didn't know the answer, what I had or the best thing that I had was maybe an error message. And then I could try to figure out why I was getting that error message. And this was very much where Google really helped, right? I had something that could get me to resources that might give me the answer or help me figure out the answer or give me something that then helps me figure out the answer from there. But I didn't have this thing where I could say, here is my project, build this project in C Sharp, and do these certain things to make sure that I pass all the grading criteria for my class. That wasn't a thing, you know, and nowadays that is a thing. And I think I'm lucky in a lot of ways that I was born in the time where I had Google to use. And even now I can leverage all these LLM tools, which is amazing, but I don't feel envious of anybody who's learning from the ground up right now, how to do computer science or how to code. I think it's very different and I think it's a dangerous time because you just don't really have to think that hard. And it's very optional, right? You can think harder if you want to, but thinking back to how people actually had to learn how to code a long time ago, it's very different. Or even get information in general. You know, if you wanted to learn when George Washington was born, you had to probably go to the library and like physically go somewhere where there was some document or resource that could give you that answer. You know, when I was in school, it was way more of, okay, if I wanted to know when Isaac Newton invented calculus, that was something I could look up and get the answer to. But for computer science, I could only get to resources that would probably give me the answer in the best case, or more realistically, it'd probably give me a resource that can maybe help me figure out the answer on my own. But now you just don't have to do that. It feels like you can almost buy insurance for $19.99 a month if you just have an LLM subscription and you're almost guaranteed to not fail any classes or we'll probably get even pretty good grades throughout your entire computer science degree. And that was not something that I had. I got many C's during my computer science degree and I struggled a lot. But I actually think from that struggling is where I learned a lot of the information that I needed to be a successful software engineer. A lot of the things that I learned, I actually learned them and internalized them very deeply because I spent so much time trying to learn them. And it feels very strange that now people who are in school can really just get away with like writing a three sentence prop and then all of a sudden their entire project or the 1500 lines of code that they were supposed to write is written for them while they're just like nursing two beers on a Wednesday. It's very, very odd, obviously, if you're of age. It's very weird and strange to me that that is the world that we live in. And I think that this is gonna become a larger and larger problem possibly in the engineering space. And I almost feel like this is gonna be a thing where it's like the 08 crash financially, but for software engineering. And I know that probably doesn't make a lot of sense, so I'll try and explain a little bit. 
But from my very you know limited understanding of the 08 financial crash, it seems like there were a bunch of loans that went out that maybe shouldn't have gone out. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm not really gonna go deeper into it. That is my general understanding. Yes, I watched the big short. But all that I actually care about is it seems to me like maybe this sort of thing is also happening in the engineering space. Obviously that had repercussions for the 08 crash in you know, the markets. And now I feel like we might face something at some unbeknownst year in the future or some time in the future, because I think we have all these different people who are leveraging these tools and moving really, really quickly with, with them. But maybe we shouldn't be doing that. Like maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe it's not a good idea to build a house of cards with very, very, very unsupported cards. Cards that you don't really understand or know how to use or never used before, where you actually don't even know how to play cards and all of a sudden you're building a house of cards. That it's very tall and very important structures are relying on that house of cards. So I wouldn't be surprised, unfortunately, if there's some time in the future where entire companies go under because there's some sort of security threat that happens or some sort of bug that gets exposed that hackers can take advantage of. I think it sounds very pessimistic and I don't really mean it to, but this is actually uh, how I'm kind of thinking about the field right now and just, you know, talking out loud about it. I guess it does sound really negative and maybe it really is, but I kind of think that's where we are. I think there's a lot of people just using stuff that we don't really understand how it works. And we're also using these things before we understand what they're doing on the behalf of us. It's very different, you know, when you have experience as an engineer and you know how to do a task, but you decide to give it to maybe a more junior engineer because then that's something that will teach them a skill or it's a, a project that will help them get promoted or anything like that, right? The point is that you're not taking it because it's not really worth your time or you know how to do it and it's a better opportunity for someone else. I think people in the industry, almost everybody, is treating LLMs like that, except they don't necessarily have the experience or the, the prowess or the technical competency maybe in a certain area. Again, you don't have to be an expert on everything, but like if you don't know how to write C-sharp or do a certain thing in Java, maybe you should do it once or twice on your own. And then once you understand how it works and all the intricacies of it, then maybe you should use an LLM to save yourself some time. But I think everybody's knee-jerk reaction really is to just use these tools to do things on their behalf that they don't know how to do. And in that way, they're very much like black boxes. You just trust them inherently. And if you aren't as good as the tool, you're really as good as the tool, you know? So unless you're better than the tool and you're leveraging it again, like it's this junior engineer, you're really just limited by how good that tool is if you're just fully wholeheartedly leaning on it. Or really at this point, I think people are just putting their full weight on it. I think you should lean on it once you are at a point where you should and can and know how to do all the stuff underneath. But I think everybody's just sitting on it. They're putting their full weight on these tools and just completely relying on them. And I don't think that's going to be good for the future. And so I'm afraid, honestly, for what computer science degrees are going to be. And I think generally just college as a whole, because it feels like you're just going to go through skating by and getting answers uh, that are just at your fingertips. It feels very hard to tell an 18 year old kid that you should go to the library for four hours and not go out this weekend and study for the exam that you have on Monday or finish the problem set that you have for linear algebra. And I'm very interested to see how the field evolves from using these tools and what ends up actually happening once we've had them for a little bit longer and we build even more complicated systems with them. But yeah, I don't know. I just have been thinking about it and I don't really think computer science degrees are going to be here to stay. I think it's been a natural progression where companies have cared less and less if you have formal training. But now I actually, I wonder if people are even going to go to computer science degrees at all. Because I think that largely you can get all the information that you need to get a job if that really is the, the ultimate goal at the end of like a four year degree. Or I feel like you're just going to feel like there's all this money that you're paying that you're probably just going to skate through anyways, right? You're probably just going to like, cheat or use these different resources because you don't want to sit in the library and do the hard work and get these things in your brain the the sort of old-fashioned way but yeah i don't know i really don't feel envious of people who are doing computer science degrees now and i'm not telling people to drop out or anything of that nature but i think if people are in these degrees you should really make sure that you're getting your money's worth try to make use of the best resources that you have and try to learn on your own before you leverage these different tools because it is going to be very interesting I think it's a natural progression that we're getting to the point where everything and anything related to computers is becoming higher and higher level and there's more levels of abstraction. If you think about it, it's actually very logical, right? You had something like binary originally, then you had punch cards, then you had assembly language, then you had something like C and higher level languages like Java, then you had something like Python, which is still very high level, but it looks more like English. And now it's like, okay, I'm actually just writing English and I'm getting code. And I think that's a very natural progression. But 
if we don't understand that entire sort of iceberg of that tech stack or of that progression, I think we could be in for a world of pain at some point if we just keep sitting on the very top of the iceberg and don't really want to dive deep onto anything that's underneath of it. So I don't know, maybe that's super doom and gloom. That's sort of how I've been feeling about the field and just reflecting on it. But yeah, I don't really feel envious of people in computer science degrees, but if you are in them, I really strongly encourage you to learn and use the resources as resources. Don't use them as things that are just gonna give you the answer magically, because that's not how you're actually gonna become an effective engineer. So yeah, I don't know, so my thoughts, let me know what you guys think.